guys, we're here for another video from my creative year and this is the August tutorial. I'm gonna bring you a little bit of a different video. It's not gonna be a um, art tutorial specifically or a journal page specifically. We're gonna talk about this little book. So um, I've been sharing this on social media and I've been asked repeatedly, please share what you're doing and why you're doing it. So this is what we're here about. <laughs> um, this is a moleskin cahier. Um, I'll link, leave links for the products that I can in the description below for you all. Um, now, the Moleskine Cahier has sort of thinnish paper. Um, it's great sketching paper. It does have some bleed through even with um, acrylic, I mean, sorry, ballpoint pen. Some like ghosting. It's not great for, don't even try watercolor because yeah, it's just gonna make a mess and it's gonna pill and it's gonna go right through the paper and I mean, you can like spray the whole thing with acrylic sprays or do something with, you know, water paint, water color paints. Um, but you're gonna have to be really gentle with it. And it's just, to be honest, it's not worth the bother. If you were going to try something really wet in here, um, cover the background before you do anything else with a clear gesso or a, a watercolor ground, because uh, the paper is not intended for water media. Okay, um, that all being said, I prefer to work in small journals. I prefer to work in journals with um, this type of paper for general mixed media work. Um, the Moleskin Cahier is one of my favorite journals to do sketching in, to do this kind of work in that we're going to talk about. Um, I also use Moleskin journals like old Moleskin planners for an art journal. Here's one right here. Wait, let me see. Here's one right here that I'm working on, and this is a 2017-2018 weekly notebook. Um, the pages, this is, you can tell right here, the pages wrinkle up, they um, don't hold, well, oh, this needs to be wax. They don't hold the water media well. I need to put wax paper in there. Um, but I think they're fun and challenging to work with, and um, I like that these already have like calendar things printed on the background. I find that interesting. Um, so that's just me, work what, in what you enjoy working in, but I think the, for this kind of book, the Moleskine Cahier works very well, and it's not too big, so you don't have to store it. So this is what I'm calling, uh, this is a reference book, a personally created for me, myself, and I reference book. So in the old days of creativity, I would use these, I still do occasionally. You notice I have them labeled. These are obviously just, um, oh, these two are stuck together. These are just school notebooks. There we go. These are just school notebooks. And I started these a long time ago, um, and I've talked about them on my channel before, and I would take images from um, nature that I took pictures of, um, things off of the internet or out of magazines, and I would just tape them in here with scotch tape. And these are my personal like image reference books. Um, I don't do as much of this anymore, um, but I do still occasionally, and I still have these hanging around because when I want to create something and I'm sort of stuck for an image uh, for a painting or a composition, um, these really work for me. And I get tired of looking around on the internet, to be honest with you. However, I wish I had done them the other way that I'm doing these other ones. Um, you'll see I have, like I said, I have lots of different textures. Textures. Lots of di different categories. That one's textures. Landscapes. Like all kinds of things. Cities and architecture. Animals and insects. This one doesn't have nearly as much in it. Buddhas and mermaids. People. Somewhere I have one I started way back in like 2005. Hang on. This is the one that started it all way back when and I was still sewing at the time and I wanted to collect reference images and material um, and create sort of my own personal reference library. This was back before, um, before Pinterest, <laughs> before, uh, you know, I barely got started on the internet if I was even on there at all. Um, and I would collect images out of magazines 
at random and I would paste them in here. Some of these are out of magazine. This is actually um, wrapping paper. And these are great for shape and, well, oh, see some interior design. Composition, color. But I really, as I was thinking about these, really wanted to take them one step further and part of me is actually tempted to take these apart and create them into the other books that I'm doing now, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I even would put paint chips in here. I think I'm going to just leave these the way they are. If there are some in images in here that I think I want to put in the other book, I think I'll just make a copy. You can see that I started with the paint chips doing what we're going to do in the other book. That's a clue right there. There are some vintage pieces in here that I would pick up and then maybe want to use a copy of that in a collage or something. There are all, all sorts of images. Anyway, I have a lot of these. It's fun to look through them. I could spend all day doing that. So I decided recently that I would take that one step further and I really wanted to make an inspiration journal for myself that had to do with not only images of shape and form that would inspire compositions and um, collages either in my art journals or on canvas, but that would also inspire me as far as color is concerned and color themes are concerned. So I put together this one. I'm calling it Color Inspirations. Um, I, did, I skipped the first page because I knew I wanted to be a title page. I also wanted to put sort of a a guide at the bottom for what my different abbreviations mean to myself so I would remember someday when, when I'm looking at this going media what did I mean by media oh yeah that Dina Wakely paint um, so at the time the inspiration for this came about I was culling some more magazines pulling images for collage maybe or to add to my inspiration notebooks and I decided with some of the images I found, you know, I'd like to take it a step further. I'd like to save the image and I'd also like to pick paint colors from my stash that I'm inspired by in the image. Um, and I started with this one. I really thought that, let's zoom you in just a little bit. There we go. I really thought by looking at this image that I wanted to be inspired by the image itself. There we go. Um, in shape, but also color. And I wanted these images to give me color inspiration for composition. So say I wanted to create something in my journal or on canvas that had greens and browns in it, what other colors could I use in it that would really help it pop? Well, if I refer back to this journal, I know I could use teals and turquoise, a little bit of gray, white, and some kind of pale yellow color would really, really make it pop. And then I just started going from there and I, found more and more images to do this with. I also found pretty early on that if I took um, one of my homemade um, stamps or objects I stamp with, um, dipped in all the colors, I could see what they look like all together. So I took this piece of cardboard packaging material and I started stamping it into the colors and adding that mark to all the pages, which has turned out really well. So I've created all of these different pages inspired by these images that I found in different magazines and things. And I've created my own inspiration of color based on that original image. I also have made sure to notate where the image came from, what it's called, and who the artist is, if I know, and if I can find that, if it's in the magazine or wherever I have accumulated that image from, and I will show you more examples of that. And it's really led me to some interesting places, like, for instance, this particular color theme has no teal in it, which is usually my go-to color. But I gotta tell you, while I may not paint this exact composition, I cannot wait to use this color theme in something. It's a departure for me, but I think it would be a lot of fun. So I found a bunch of painting images and then I found 
that I had some inspiration clipboards in um, a different place here in the art room and they had sets of images on them. Some were from paint chips, some were things I printed that I took with my phone. This particular one had a random Pinterest quote on it. I decided to take those things off the clipboards and put them in this book and use them for color inspiration making sure to take note if I knew where these images came from and if they were like from Lowe's paint chip images I put that on there. If it was something taken with my camera I put that on there. And so then I came up with these and we have another one to do today. So this is a collection of images. These two are taken from my back patio of the uh, sunset sky, stormy. In both cases it was storming. Um, and then these two are from uh, paint chips from Lowe's. Um, so then based on this collection of images that I think are interesting together, I have pulled a collection of paints that I think, I need to, I need to clip this open at this point because it's getting a little bulky, that I think represent these collection of images decently well. So we are going to, I'm going to show you exactly what I do, not that it's rocket science or anything. So one of the other things I found bonus painting paper. <laughs> um, so this is a news, newsprint pad from, notepad from Muji. Um, but just any random old pad of paper next to you, you're going to want that. I have a palette plate. Let's zoom out just a little bit. There we go. And I've got my paint in front of me. So we've got the Dina Wakely Media Paint in white. You only need a little bit. And then Decoart Americana Paints. Those are the two brands I'm mainly using. So this one is Americana and Cadmium Yellow. Ugh. Make sure to shake up that Americana paints. They do tend to separate if they've been sitting for a while. We, uh, media paint in Tangerine. Uh, media paint in Magenta. As I'm calling out the colors, you could look at the images here and see what you think about my choices. Um, Americana and primary red. Media paint in fuchsia. Americana and true blue. And Americana and Payne's Gray. So one thing I do is I stand all the paints up. You can kind of see part of the bottle there off, just off camera, in front of me. I turn the labels to face me, so that after I do the swatches, I can make note of exactly what the colors were. Let's move the coffee so I don't get paint water in the coffee, shall we? Because that would be bad. Okay, got some brushes, and then I just make some swatches of color. And then I wipe my brush off on the newsprint, and I go down my, my row of colors. That's a pretty orange. Now, once you make this swatch book and you have a few image under your, images under your belt, you can use it to, like I said before, get inspiration for themes of color, composition, shape, and form in not only your art journals, but your canvas, if you are doing canvas work or some kind of wall art. Um, and you don't have to just use it for acrylic paint inspiration. This is just color inspiration. So you could take, take this page and use it to inspire colors of colored pencil, marker, watercolor. You have the colors here. You can match those or pair those up with colors of other products that you have in your stash. We're just doing it in acrylic paint because that holds up really well on this paper and you'll get a nice bright pop of color. Okay, so we're gonna put that in the water. Then I'm going to take my big crystal pen and next to each swatch I'm going to write the name or abbreviated name of the brand of paint and then the color. I'm 
like that. And then I'm gonna take my little scrap of cardboard. And find a place somewhere to stamp it. Like maybe here. Sometimes I don't get as good impression as I want, so then I go with a thin brush. Or I don't have all the colors represented. At the same time, I don't want it to be um, perfect. That's better. So then I would just let that dry, and, and that's a good ins um, addition to my color inspiration book, but then what do you do with all of this? That's where this comes in. So then I'm gonna take my same piece of cardboard or whatever you're using to make marks. I'm gonna use up the paint. And I'm gonna make some painty papers that I can use in other artwork. Maybe even the one that's inspired by that particular page in the Color Inspiration Journal. So this month, I want you to focus on creating your own style, creating your own reference material, trying something unique and different. Your art is worthy of your voice, and I want you to prove it this month. So I would just keep going with that until I ran out of paint or I was done making marks and then that's it. So this month I am working on color inspiration and um, really developing uh, my style and giving it more of a voice. I want you to do the same. If you're not part of my creative year and you want to be, the link is in the description below. I um, can't wait to see what the other teachers bring this month. At the time of filming this, we're at the end of July, so I don't have any idea what they're doing. None of us have talked about it, so I think it's gonna be a fun month. Um, but again, the theme for the month over my creative year is style, and the challenge this month is worthy. So I wanna see what you do with that, and I can't wait. I am going to explore my voice and my style in things like this color inspiration journal, and I can't see, wait to see where this leads me. I also can't wait to see what you all do with the prompts this month. Um, anyway, if you'd like to see um, what we're doing over there, uh, go and join. If you would like to follow me on social media and see what I'm up to on a daily basis creatively, um, or support the free content here on, YouTube, uh, here on YouTube or over on Facebook in the art groups, um, there is a link tree link in the description below, which when you click on it, you're going to find all my social media sites, places where you can support the free content here on YouTube and all of that stuff. Um, so give it a peruse and look. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And above all, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.